This is Twit. An RGB case cooler. Uh, Ken Burgess is right up on this PC perspective. We've, uh, I mean, Scythe, I, it's it's funny because uh, uh, Kent writes about Scythe uh, seeming to, quote, exist on the fringe of the mainstream PC enthusiast awareness, uh, unquote. Part of me was like, oh, everybody knows about Scythe. And then I'm like, oh, wait, look who I hang out with every week. Right. So... Uh, <laughs> And I, I, I thought that too, because he he gives me these reviews and I was putting it in the system. I'm like, wait a minute, Scythe is mainstream, kind of. And then wait a minute, he's like, what do you think of what springs to mind? He says, when you talk about, oh, I need a CPU cooler, you think about Noctua, you think about Be Quiet, you think about Cooler Master. And I mean, everybody talks about the Hyper 212 Evo right. from Cooler Master, or at least has for the last few years. Uh, Noctua has been a, a huge name. Their, their D15, the D14, I think, actually came out more than a decade ago. It's, it's somewhere yeah. around there. It's it's just there's some legendary coolers out there that everybody remembers and thinks about. Cooler Master was the brand I knew when I first started years ago. But Scythe, they make incredibly good stuff for the money. And yeah. I think the first Scythe cooler I ever got my hands on was the Ninja 4. So I got into this late. But I couldn't believe it. It was spinning at lower RPMs, thus making less noise. And cooling better than most of the other coolers I had access to at that time. And it could even beat out some of the kind of underperforming 240 millimeter liquid coolers of that time. It, it was just ridiculous. And it was less expensive. This, this Mugen 5, I already looked at one of these a few months ago. Uh, this is an update that has uh, addressable RGB fans. Comes with two of them. It's but they, they have apparently refined it a little bit. Uh, Kent was talking about the base plate on this. He said it's the flattest and smoothest scythe contact plate I've seen. And it looks really, really flat. He said you can barely discern any machining marks. He said it's just top tier as far as the base plate. And while that may seem a little ridiculous to talk this much about the base plate, that's what's making contact with your CPU. So... You know, proper thermal paste application, of course, matters, but having a mm -hmm. really, really flat base plate, at that point, the flatness of your actual CPU becomes the next logical step if you're that concerned about it. What people do, what's called lapping, where they sand down the top of the CPU, the the heat spreader plate. What is that called? I'm forgetting now. But... Uh, <laughs> Something. Anyway, the, the actual mate between the CPU and this was excellent, and that's what I've noticed about Scythe coolers too, is that even mm -hmm. if they seem like they wouldn't cool any better than another brand, the the contact with the CPU is so great that even at lower fan speeds, they tend to be just as good, if not better. And this is, I wanna, what's the pricing on this? I want to say this is around $50 or $60. And the little group that he tested it against features things like the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3. That's the previous generation. And then Scythe's own Fuma. He tried the Wraith Prism. This was with a Ryzen 7 3800X. He just got one of these and a, and a new board, and he was testing out with every cooler he had access to. And this Mugen 5 was within two degrees of the Dark Rock Pro 3, so which is a much larger dual-tower cooler. So it, it just kind of speaks to that the mounting mechanism and the base plate basically are what Scythe is, is best at. And their mounting mechanism is as good as Noctua's, I think. It's a little bit different. It's not quite as polished. But once you have it installed, I feel like it exerts more pressure on the CPU than anything else where you're actually having to kind of back off a little bit for fear of you know stressing the socket or the PCB where you can get a really, really firm grip. Grip? Mount. A lot of pressure. <laughs> Help me. Please, Patrick, say something. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you kept going, man, and I just I wanted know. to stay out of your way. Uh, you know, it's, look, um, you know, excellent build quality, some seriously thoughtful design choices. RGB, if you're living the La Vida RGB, so you can keep your case all colorful, get your uh, unicorn vomit on, and a gold award from PC Perspective. 
I give it a thumbs up. I, I know yeah, I, I own at least two side coolers. They they do well. It's a little bit more than I thought, actually. I'm thinking of the previous version, the Mugen Five ARGP. I think he's yeah. This is actually seventy nine bucks. Okay, it's five percent off right now with a coupon, so a little bit less than that. But that's it's a little higher now. You're into that territory where you could buy an NHD fifteen, I think, if it's on discount. But that would be a good AB. I think part, but you have to understand part of what you're paying for because you can get a Mugen Five for around sixty dollars. This is the mm -hmm. ARGP version, so it has addressable RGB fan and top plate, so you can com just completely overwhelm your build with RGB goodness if you so choose. So much RGB goodness.